Hello, everyone. All right. So it's been a year since the passing of Miss Chesley Chris. I think it's very important that we continue to talk about this topic, even when it's not fresh, even when no one else is talking about it, because the struggles don't disappear. Miss Christ was only 30 years old. She was not only a beautiful person, but she was also very accomplished, an intelligent attorney, an individual who competed in sports. And I remember watching the Red Table Talk and some of the things that people don't typically learn about when something like this happens was shared by her mom and stepdad during this episode. And what I learned from everything they shared is that this young woman was a bubbly person who enjoyed being around her family, who had a very good support system from what it seems like, who had a great relationship with her mom, who loved her siblings, who understood the need to protect and to constantly work on her mental health. The episode mentions that she believed in therapy, that she took time to wind down on a regular basis. And it also mentions that she had a prior suicide attempt. What I gather from all of this is that even in situations where a person has a great support system, where everything seems to be going well on the outside, a lot of times they're pushing forward and they're fighting to live for someone else. Even if everyone looks at them and sees, wow, this person has their dream job. This person has accomplished things that a lot of people never will. The struggles that they deal with follow them even through all of those accomplishments, even through all of those great times with family and friends. And I wanna take this opportunity to encourage all of you to just be kind. That's my biggest takeaway because even when someone seems like they've got it all together, seems like they've got a great family, a great support system, a dream job, everything that you think should make them happy and perhaps they thought would make them happy too, they may be dying on the inside. And after fighting through something like this for an extended period of time, there comes a point where they just can't take it anymore. They can't fight anymore because they can't escape the pain and the loneliness. So no matter who you encounter today and every day, be kind to them. Be as kind to them as you would want them to be to you if you were grieving or if you were going through the worst situation in your life. Because what they're dealing with behind closed doors is often nothing like what they portray publicly. All right. So take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones and be kind to all those you encounter. I'll see you next time.
the morning of her passing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chesley left a note in her apartment, very simple, just said she wanted to leave everything to me. Um, Sunday mornings, Chesley knows I go to work out at my exercise class. I was leaving my class. I was gonna call her on my way home, and when I looked at my phone, I noticed there was a text message from her. And the first thing she said is, first, I'm sorry. By the time you get this, I won't be alive anymore. And it makes me even more sad to write this because I know it will hurt you the most. I, I love you, Mom, and you are my best friend and the person I've lived for for years. I wish I could stay with you, but I cannot bear the crushing weight of persistent sadness, hopelessness, and loneliness any longer. I've never told you these feelings because I've never wanted you to worry and because I hoped they would eventually change, but I know they never will. They follow me through every accomplishment, success, family gathering, friendly dinner. I cry almost every day now, like I'm in mourning. I've wished for death for years, and I know you would want to know and want to help, but I haven't wanted to share this weight with anyone. Regardless of that, thank you sincerely for being there for me in some of my loneliest moments without me even telling you I needed you. You have kept me alive and ready to face another day because you answer every phone call and you are there for me at the drop of a hat. You listen to me and care when I tell you what goes on in my life and you've always made me feel like you love me. I love you more than any person I've ever known. You've done nothing wrong. You've done everything right. I no longer feel like I have any purpose in life. I don't know if I ever really did. And some things I'm just um, gonna skip just because they're just a little more personal. Yeah. And she also left in here her final wishes um, which we are carrying out. Yeah. Mm. She says, I've pushed away most of my friends and I can't fix any of that, no matter how hard I've tried. So I will leave and rejoin God in heaven and hope to find peace there. I don't wanna leave, but I genuinely feel like I have to if I want to escape my loneliness that feels like it has no end. I fought against depression for a long time, but it's won this time around. There aren't enough words in the world to describe my love and appreciation for you. You are the perfect mom, and I will love you forever, even in death. Feel free to share this message. People should know that you're the best mom in the world and that you were the best mom to me that I ever could have hopes for 